Welcome back to ML Miller Frights. This is ML Miller, and man, do I have an awesome movie for you guys this time around. While I'm usually attracted to deeper things like complex storytelling, nuanced acting, insightful themes, I'm not too proud to say that if a film simply looks, sounds, and oozes cool, I'll let it have its way with me. Blood Machines is a CG-heavy sci-fi horror adventure with bone-shaking music and imagery out of a futurist's worst nightmare. It's a three-part series that just premiered on Shudder last week, each installment clocking in at about 15 or so minutes, making the entire series runtime only about 50 minutes. So while this doesn't exactly constitute as a film, it's damn near close if you watch them all consecutively. Here's the synopsis. Piloted by a pair of humanoids, Vaskin, played by Anders Heinrichsen, who doesn't really respect anything or anyone, especially machines, and Lago, Christian Eriksson, who has a strong bond with the ship's female-shaped computer, Mima, voiced by Alexandra Flandrin, are piloting a ship that downs an unmanned vehicle that crashes on a nearby planet. From the wreckage, a spirit in the form of a woman emerges, and this event is seen by some of the locals, a tribe of women warriors who seem to have strong beliefs in the connection between the spirit and machines. The warriors are led by a tough-as-nails warrior named Corey, played by Elisa Lazowski. As the spirit floats into the atmosphere, the ship, with Corey as hostage, gives chase, but the spacemen have no idea what it is they are chasing down. Slow motion movement, dazzling strobe lights, vibrant shapes, paired with the electronic hammered beats from the band Carpenter Brute make Blood Machines a film that is unlike anything I've ever seen or heard before. Blood Machines feels like the product of an all-night orgy between Clive Barker's Hellraiser, Richard Stanley's Hardware, Panos Cosmotos, Beyond the Black Rainbow, Cronenbergian Body Horror, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, and Tron. Now imagine all of that going on, set to the tune of a dark synth-based concert played by Daft Punk. It's as hypnotic as it is beautiful, with multicolored lights sparkling and glistening from these gritty and time-worn machines that are floating around. Director Seth Eicherman has a vision that's truly original and awe-inspiring as he pairs the destruction and deterioration of the machine and metal with the vivid and mind-numbing luminescence of the spirit. Plus, he doesn't forget to make these surreal machines soft and sensual, with curves that exude an essence of raunch and sex that was immediately reminding me of H.R. Giger's body and sexualized alien forms. This is a Frankenstein mishmash of different aspects of many movies that we all know and love. Most likely the film was made pretty cheaply with all of the money focused on the dazzling CG work and the rest made in front of a green screen. The future technology and spaceships used in Blood Machines are similar to the stuff you've seen in other films but still feel fresh and groundbreaking. For ages, captains have called their ships She. Well, in Blood Machines, this She is given form as a beautiful spirit with iridescent veins and glowing upside-down crosses on their torsos. They live within these ships. When the ships break down, they long to be released. There's so many sights and sounds that you've never seen or heard before in Blood Machines, it can only be described as intoxicating. The band Carpenter Brute is as much a creative force here as director Seth Eicherman. They complement each other like clown shoes and duct tape. Eicherman's visual pulse to Carpenter Brute's molar-shattering beats perfectly transfixes the viewer and teleports them right into the middle of space where the action takes place. This is big, bold, and cinematic filmmaking that made my jaw drop and my eyes open wide. The story is not the deepest, the characters are not the most nuanced, but it does deal with the spiritual connection that the characters have with the universe they occupy. It's the basic stuff of almost every cyberpunk story that you've ever read. The characters serve their purpose to guide me through the light show, lest I get swept away by the abyss. And I was okay with that. The story pairs mysticism and futurism in ways I've seen in some of the best heavy metal stories. 
I guess the best compliment I can give Blood Machines is that as soon as the film was over, I wanted to watch it again and repeat the experience. And that's how I can sort of categorize Blood Machines. It's a truly unique experience. The three shorts envelop you in an uncanny sound and light show. I can't write enough flowery descriptors for this one. You should see it for yourselves. While I don't know if I understood it all, I honestly don't care if I did. I'm simply impressed with the way it made me feel. I'm also baffled as to why it's cut into three parts, as I think seeing all three in a row works perfectly fine, and that's the way I suggest you watch this. Still, I love the musical assault by Carpenter Brute during the opening and closing credits the three times that I witnessed it, so I didn't mind the way this series is presented in segmented form. Just take my word for it. Do not miss this delicious feast for the senses. Witness this film on as large a screen as you can find. Turn up the volume past the breaking point. Sit back and enjoy the experience. Blood Machines should be experienced big, bright, and loud. Down below, I have links to not only the trailer for Blood Machines, but also a music video, which is a prequel to Blood Machines, directed by Eicherman and performed by Carpenter Brute, Corbo Killer. Both of them, I highly recommend you check out. That's it for now for ML Miller Frights. Be sure to hit the like, share, and subscribe button down below. Tap that bell for notifications of when I will be posting my next videos. And leave a comment or two down below. Thanks. Stuck inside your reality, your